Well, you don't mean, or do you, that uh, Stubert is just a new scientific theory about God and the universe and the origin of life that only scientists can understand? Quite the contrary. Subud is not a theory at all. It is an action. Like turning the ignition key in a car so that the spark plugs come alive. Mm -hmm. Unless you have the key, you can't start the car. But you don't need to have any theory about cars and how they work in order to start the engine. Subud is like a key that enables us to make contact with the supreme source of life. This is called in religion the Holy Spirit, the giver of life. Well, is that all Subud means? Is it just a, as you say, a key to getting a contact with this mysterious source of life and nothing more than that? The word Subud means very much more than that. It's taken from three Sanskrit words, Sushila, Buddhi, Dharma. Sushila is right living or right action. Buddhi is the power that resides in the higher or real self of man to enable him to know and to act rightly in everything. Dharma means the supreme law or the will of God. When the three words are put together to make Subud, they mean pretty much the same as the reply given by Christ Jesus to the question about the greatest commandment, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy mind and with all thy strength and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Well, that sounds uh, plainly enough like good Christianity. Why should people need something new like Subud to teach them how they should live? Subud is not a teaching or a religion. We already have all the teaching we need and we have true religion already on the earth. But it's not enough to be taught how we should live and what we should do. We need to be able to live that way and live it all the time. But very, very few people on earth today are able to live according to their religion. The reason for this is obvious. We are so dominated by outside forces that there's no room for the inner life. Even those who want to live according to the teaching of their religion cannot do so because their inner self or soul has been closed up and shut in by the pressure of worldly forces. The creative power working through the mind of man has produced the modern world. It is utterly different from the world of our ancestors. We have learned how to release vast sources of energy and we've learned how to make wonderful machines. We can travel around the world in a few days. All this has brought humanity under the action of immensely strong material forces. We do not dominate these forces, they dominate us. But there's no going back. Life on earth is getting more and more complicated every generation. We cannot carry on our lives without great organizations, which inevitably take away the freedom of individuals. All these factors have produced a situation in which people have lost contact with their inner life. This is the chief reason why there are so many mentally disturbed people in the world. Why people need tranquilizers and sedatives. Why we live in a state of constant nervous tension and anxiety that was unknown a thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. But inside every human being there is another self. The real self or soul. Even if it is shut up so that we've forgotten that it exists, it's still there. All that is needed is that it should be brought to life and made strong and conscious. Then that real human self can stand up to all the pressures of the modern world. That's what Subud does for people. It awakens the true human self and enables it to gain mastery over the lower or material self. People who've been awakened in that way find, after a time of course, that they can feel sure of the truth of their own religion and live according to its teaching. Mm -hmm. Well, how exactly is it done? Now, suppose that I wanted to have this direct contact with the supreme source of life. How would I uh, go about it? Ask and it's given you. Only you must understand that it really has to be you that asks. We often ask for things just because someone else has got them and we want to copy them. Or we ask because we have some theory about what's good for us. Or we ask just because we are bored or curious or frightened or worried or disappointed with our lives. To ask from a real inner need of which we are conscious and which we 
no cannot be satisfied with earthly things is rare. Moreover, we must ask freely, because we choose to ask. We men have been created with our human will, free to accept or to reject the divine will. That freedom is not taken from us as long as we live on this earth. Therefore, ask and it shall be given you is not quite such a simple action as it sounds. Most people are divided in themselves. With one part, they want to ask for the inner life. But with another part, they are afraid of losing what they treasure, the outer life. This inner division or inner conflict is characteristic of modern man. Perhaps men have always been like that. Certainly they are now. And this human weakness of ours, our inability to ask wholeheartedly for anything, even eternal life, is also taken into account in Subud. True asking must come from the true self, that is, the inner self or the soul. But this has been closed up, and a channel must be opened in order to reach it. To overcome this difficulty, the contact is made with the help of another person who has already received it. If the power of life is working strongly enough in that other person, he or she can act as a link or channel and the contact is made. Even if the asking is weak, faltering and full of doubt and hesitation as it so often is. This is called in Subud the opening or initiation. It's like handing someone the key of his own car so that he can drive it himself until he has the key, he can't drive. But once he's been given the key, the person who handed it to him isn't needed anymore. Well, is this uh, procedure you have just described, this opening or initiation, all that there is to Subud? No. The driver who should drive the car is the true self or soul. But this self, in nearly all people, is still a child, or perhaps not even born yet. He has been deprived of contact with the world and has no experience of life. Our minds and bodies are not used to living under the guidance of the soul. All kinds of bad or stupid habits have been formed in us that prevent us from responding to the true self or master within us. In order to reach our true nature, and by that I mean the state of a real human soul in a real human body, a whole process of purification, repairing, strengthening and renewal is needed. As body and mind are being prepared to receive it, the soul itself must be born and grow to maturity. This is a great and wonderful transformation, the need for which is taught in all religion, but it takes time. And we cannot do it by ourselves. It is brought about in us by renewed contact with the source of life from which we came. 